Welcome to another How To English video with me, Adam David Broughton. In this video, I'm going to show you the four best fluency practice exercises that you should be doing every single day. If you do these every day, your fluency skills will go to the next level. You'll feel comfortable speaking English, you'll feel confident speaking English, and you'll enjoy speaking English. It requires a little bit of time every day, and the benefits are noticeable really, really quickly. Stick around to the end of the video because I'll be sharing one bonus fluency exercise which is perfect for building your confidence. So, let's get started. Number one, the best fluency exercise that you can do, this one's really, really simple, is reading out loud. I know it sounds simple, and it is, but the benefits are really, really good. Why is reading out loud such a good speaking exercise? The reason it's such a good speaking exercise is because it's a very bad reading exercise. So just imagine when you're at school and your teacher made you read some of the textbook out loud. Probably what happened is that at the end of the text, you have no recollection of what you just read. You don't remember anything of the text that you just read. The reason for that is that you don't process the words. Why? Because you speak them, you say them straight away, which means that reading out loud is a fantastic speaking exercise and a very bad reading exercise, but we're only interested in improving our speaking and fluency skills, so this is what you should be doing. Very simple, five minutes, take some text, it can be anything, it doesn't matter, some text in English. You take five minutes, take the text, and just start reading out loud. You should read it purposefully, quite slowly, and exaggerating certain points of pronunciation, okay? And you read that for five minutes, non-stop, just speaking out loud with reading, and then when you get to the end of the five minutes, you stop and continue your day doing whatever you were doing. It's a really good exercise. Now, you'll notice two things when you finish this exercise. What you'll notice is that you remember very little of the text that you just read. That means that you did it well. The second thing that you'll notice is that you feel quite tired. The reason for that is that it's a speaking exercise. You're physically producing those words in English and it feels very tiring because you're very quickly reading the words, processing them very quickly, and speaking them at the same time. So what you find is that you'll feel tired and you'll remember very little of the text. That means that you've done it correctly. Do that five minutes today. It's a very simple one. You can do it very quickly. You just need some text from the internet or wherever in English, and you just start reading out loud. Really, really good. Try it today. Number two, the second best fluency practice exercise that you should be doing every day is one that I call general observation. So this is pretty simple. What you do is you speak about the world around you, the world that you can see, the world that you can observe in front of you right now. What do you talk about? What you can see, the relationship between objects, are things moving? What are they doing? Where are people going? You just talk about what you can see. When I explain to my students that you should be speaking on your own, often, they say, but I don't know what to talk about because I don't have a lot of imagination. I say, just open your eyes, look at the world around you. Wherever you are, you're going to be, speak, you're going to be able to speak about what you can see. So you just describe what you can see. What you'll have are lots of nouns and lots of adjectives to describe things. And this is really simple, basic vocabulary that you should know already. It's a fantastic exercise to practice um, nouns and adjectives and if there are people moving, cars moving, people speaking to other people, just comment about what you can say and you'll be practicing verbs as well. Now remember, very useful, if there's something that you want to say but you don't know how to say, that's some of the best vocabulary that you can learn. So if, you have, if you're doing this practice exercise and you're talking about the world in front of you and there comes a point where you want to say something but you don't know how to say it, this could be grammatical or it could be related to vocabulary, write it down continue the conversation, and then check that in the dictionary later. This is really useful language because you want to say it, but you don't know how to say it. Number three. Number three is what I call an imaginary conversation. And this is, well, just as it sounds, it's an imaginary conversation with another person. It could be a meeting with a client. It could be your best friend. It could be a family member. It doesn't matter. You're just going to have an imaginary conversation with this person. This is one that kind of feels a little bit strange because obviously there's nobody there. Some people enjoy it, some people find it quite difficult, but the language that you'll be using is very useful because it's very spoken English, conversational English. So you'll be saying typical phrases 
and typical responses to questions. Again, if there's something that you want to say but you don't know how to say, write it down and check it on the internet later, look it up in a dictionary, whatever. And that's really useful language to, to learn. It could be idioms, expressions, you'll be practicing everyday spoken English. Okay, it's a very good exercise. Number four, this is what I call past, present and future. So what you're going to be doing is talking about the past, talking about the present and talking about the future. The focus on this exercise is obviously looking at the tenses, using the correct tense depending on what you're talking about. So for example, you could just talk about your day yesterday or what you're doing now and then what you're going to be doing later this evening. Really simple because of course it's your life. You can talk about your life continuously. You can do this obviously in all situations as well. You could be doing the washing up and you talk about your day. You talk about this morning, you talk about what you're doing now, you talk about later. And all of these, um, and in all of these situations, you're going to be using different tenses depending on whether you're speaking about the past, the present or the future. Again, if there's a tense that you're not sure how to use when you're speaking about the past, for example, and you're doubting between one tense and another, write it down, check it later, and practice that tense a bit more until you know when to use it perfectly. So with each of these practice exercises, you're going to be practicing a different element of fluency and a different element of English. So really, you get a, you've got the complete package about learning English and improving your fluency. So again, let's go over these. Number one was reading out loud. This one is practicing the physicality of producing English with your mouth. Often, it's not so much speaking that's difficult or fluency that's difficult, it's literally physically producing the English words and English sounds using your mouth. Reading out loud is the best thing to practice this. Number two was general observation. Talk about the world around you. What nouns, what adjectives can you see? Number three, imaginary conversation. This is looking at everyday English, typical questions, typical phrases and expressions that you use in conversational English. And then number four, this is looking at the past, the present and the future. Talking about the past, the present and the future about your own life. The focus of this is looking at tenses and grammatical structures. So you see, with these four practice exercises, you're going to be covering all aspects of English and improving your fluency at the same time. Now, what I recommend is start small. Start with just five minutes reading out loud. It's very easy, very accessible. Everybody can do it. Just find some text today, read it for five minutes, then stop and see how you feel. Ask yourself, how do I feel? Do I feel tired? Did I remember any of the text? Was it difficult? What aspects were difficult? Was it the pronunciation? Was it the flow? Was it the intonation? These are all things that you can improve over time. And then what you need to do is after a few days, you can start to incorporate another fluency practice exercise. So you've got four to choose from. Just start playing around slowly. Don't jump into it and do all of them at the same time. Take your time. Just read out loud. Just do one reading out loud today. One more tomorrow for five minutes. One more the next day. After three days, incorporate another one. Try the past, present, future or an imaginary conversation or general observation and see how you go. And then slowly add more into it. What you'll notice is very quickly, after a couple of days, you'll feel more, there'll be more flow in the way that you speak. You'll feel more comfortable and confident speaking English. Okay? Really, ideally, you want to work it up to the point where you're doing five minutes in the morning, five minutes at lunchtime, five minutes in the evening. With fluency, you don't have to practice for a very long time. Literally, only five minutes here and there is all you need to really take your fluency to the next level. Now, I've got one more exercise. This is the bonus fluency speaking practice exercise to take your English confidence to the next level. Now, I'm warning you, you're not going to like this. It will feel very uncomfortable, but those things that feel really uncomfortable actually are really, really good for improving your confidence. All you do, and it is really simple, is call a stranger. So you pick up your phone, dial a random number in an English speaking country, and speak to the person that picks up the phone. Now, you're probably thinking I'm crazy because it does sound crazy, but this was actually recommended to me from a friend of mine when I was learning Spanish. My friend recommended this and I said, oh my God, are you crazy? I could never do that. And he said, it's the best thing ever. Try it, it will change everything. And it's true. It's true that it feels very uncomfortable. You feel very, very strange, 
but that's precisely why it helps so much with your confidence. Before you pick up the phone, I was shaking. I was really, really nervous. And you want to do everything to avoid doing this exercise. And then you call the number, the person picks up and you ask, hi, my name's Adam. I would like to um, practice speaking Spanish. Would you like to speak with me? Of course, in my case, it was in Spanish. You would say it in English. And my response to the person when he told me this was, but doesn't everybody hang up on you? Now, surprisingly, no, most people will be happy to speak to you because it's such a strange situation that most people will say yes. Now, it's true that some people will just say no or just hang up the phone, but that's fine. You took an amazing step of picking up the phone and dialing a random number and speaking to another person on the other end. Now, that's really, really good for your confidence. So another way to do this is you can call a company and you can call a shop and say, hi, uh, I'd like to buy this particular model of a mobile phone. Can you help me with it? And ask some questions about it. It doesn't matter what you speak about. Now, the great thing is in that situation, they won't say no. They'll be happy to speak to you. So you just call different companies asking about different things related to the products that they sell, the services that they offer and speak about them. It's really simple and it's great because it's in that uncomfortable situation where you don't have eye contact, it's over the phone, it inherently feels very uncomfortable. That's exactly why it's a fantastic exercise to make you feel really confident using English because it's in such an uncomfortable situation. Every time that you complete one of those phone calls and put the phone down, you'll feel a boost of energy and a boost of self-confidence, which is fantastic for confidence and fantastic feeling confident speaking English. So that's the bonus exercise. I hope you like it. I hope you do it. I'm warning you, you will try to avoid it at all cost, but if you do it, the benefits are incredible in terms of um, building confidence speaking in English. I'll see you in the next video. Take care.